so this is um, my microphone right here. <laughs> and here we have some cowbells. And here a very important um, flute. Do you normally play with your flute on percussion like that? <laughs> no, this is not a percussion stick, this is a flute. Uh, this is my current setup, preparing for tour. We have uh, three keyboards, uh, we have a pad, which produces uh, percussive sounds. Here's another keyboard station, my keyboard station. I have two keyboards and um, another keyboard. So um. freak. <laughs> That sort of can play different rhythms. Cool. Oh, that's wow. that was, uh... <laughs> I got nervous. <laughs> hey, what a show. I feel that it's been so lovely to be back in a like, rehearsing room and uh, figure out the sounds and everything. We always, uh, it felt like we did something smart. Set up a rehearsing space for such a long time rather than have one week of panic stress rehearsing. Yeah, rehearsing is definitely something that... Painful experience. Yeah, it takes... Well, it's a very energy-sucking <laughs> thing, you know? It's not like there's an audience there fueling you to play through your song. Dealing with a lot of practical issues, sounds and what works and not, and then... And get musically fit somehow. Yeah, like, and with each other, and so it's definitely a bit of a, um, bit of a struggle, but we, we rehearse in like short spurts, intensive, <laughs> sometimes for an hour, and then we like need to take a break. But at the same time, I feel like uh, it kind of makes sense that, you know, because we're musicians and like for a long time we've been writing music and like maybe jamming a little bit, but then like suddenly when you're together, like, and, and, and it locks in, you know, yes. when it feels right, you know, you get that kind of kick. Yeah, it's definitely. the most yes. natural way to like all be connected, you know, like when you produce, you there's only one uh, sort of share in front of the computer or, you know, but when you rehearse, you actually, you, you get into the whole band thing. Yeah. You really need each other for it to work, yeah, you know, yeah. so you it's get really beautiful. dependent on each other, which it's beautiful. is, yeah. The album is called uh, Season High, and um, I think that we all share a kind of love for escapism and for music, the sort of power of music when it really just takes you somewhere else and, and makes you daydream. And I, I don't know, like every after every album, when you finish a new album, you have a certain feeling, you know? I mean, I get, and then you forget that feeling and then you write a new album and you have a new feeling. We had um, kind of different opinions on when the album was, was finished. You know, some, some of us wanted to like finish it earlier and then it had, we had to be focused to kind of like, you know, but okay, if someone wants to have another go at something, you know, we, yeah. let's try. And that can be kind of like... Uh, Focusing. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gothenburg has always sort of been uh, inspiration, even though it's not like a sort of conscious thing, I guess. For this album, we sort of decided to work pretty locally because, I don't know, we just wanted to be more hands-on. This is where we spend most of our time, so of course things are connected to Gothenburg, even though it's hard to figure what it is. But there is a certain uh, slowness about Gothenburg. We like uh, this place, Ramberget, because it has a park called Kaler's Park inside it, on top of it. We actually recorded some of our video for Celebrate 
at that location, so because it just sort of gives a, a perspective of Gothenburg and it's just beautiful nature. And it has a kind of magical vibe over it. I've had some epic uh, New Year's Eve um, moments there because it's like where you see all the fireworks and you get really, yeah, and refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> If you take refreshments. Yeah. One of our f uh, favorite spots is uh, the Gothenburg Library. It's one of those places where you meet all kinds of different people. You know, you could see sort of a distinguished old lady sitting there in her suit. And then there's a homeless guy and their kids. And it's just very a very mixed environment. And, you know, it's free information. And it's just uh, it's a really beautiful atmosphere in that. So far, we have we have been all right with a, without a physical altercation. <laughs> I mean, we used to uh, argue and scream and slam doors. We have sort of developed our arguing, and we now sit and maybe get a little flushed or whatever. And we're getting good at disagreeing, where it doesn't necessarily like uh, this. This kind of bound to happen all the time because we're four people with four strong wills. So um, yeah, when you kind of Practice at it, you get about it. You think you got it all set out. This feet will come in the rush. There's just one way to come out of you. I think that with the lyrics, and for us, it's not necessarily been go do this, you should think this, or this is exactly our opinion. It's a, a bit more ambiguous and more reflective, where it's like definitely. There are political opinions there, but it's not black and white, and it's more um, abstract and, and where the listener can sort of um, interpret uh, the lyrics 